The Reclaimer is the first salvage ship in the Aegis branding. Its purpose is to travel to find uh, distant wrecks of ships and reclaim those salvage parts to be used for trading. The original inspirations were themed around the Nostromo from Alien, just that thick industrial feeling. We wanted to get across the griminess and the sweatiness of the spaces and just make it feel like somewhere that wouldn't be comfortable to live in, even though you're on there for long stretches at a time. This is a, a long distance ship, so it comes with its own kitchen and its own mess hall that you can get all your food from and there's a crew quarters because the, the ship is a five man crew ship. So we've got a crew quarters, which has four beds in it and a bathroom and toilet. We also have a captain's quarters where he gets his own office and his own bedroom and toilet. There's the engineering deck, which has the engine room on it and a whole host of components in there. And that's where the actual power of the ship is all generated. There's a salvage room where the salvage gets stored after it's been processed. On the tech deck, there's a drone bay, which houses four drones and has two seats for pilots to control the drones from. Also on the tech deck, there's a gravity generator, which is this big ball that has a load of energy around it. It's just swirling, it's quite crazy and hectic. Generally speaking, um, with a ship like the Reclaimer, because it has got new features that some of the other ships haven't had. I think that this will bring a new type of gameplay to players who don't want to just fly around and shoot things. It's for the type of player who want to be a trader and travel to different destinations and just make that money. Instead of just being a marine or a gun for hire, it actually brings a chance to to transport materials and find materials and create your own source of income. The, the ship itself kind of brings a new career into the verse. It is the first proper like large salvage ship that we have. With that, we have to kind of bear in mind what features we're going to have later on. So how will the claw work on the front of it? How will we get the crushed up salvage from the front to the back of the ship where it's then processed? The process for the actual salvaging itself starts at the very front of the ship with the claw. So once you actually find your wreckage, the claw is used to go out with lasers and break the ship up into pieces. The pieces are then attracted into the reclaimer by the tractor beams either side. This then gets passed through into the processing room where the grinders grind up into smaller manageable pieces. And then this gets fed all the way through back into the salvage container units at the back of the ship. You've got two huge sets of floodlights that are used to actually see your, your, your salvage in front of you. And it's really imposing and it can almost be used as a deterrent to other players like blinding them. The whole aesthetic of the ship is designed to feel imposing and big and, and just chunky and quite aggressive. Even though it's not a ship designed for combat, it still has a turret and some firepower, but it's just designed to look and feel quite menacing and just strong. It, the salvage um, career route that we're looking into is probably going to be one of the most interesting ones by far because it's really about how can I make the most money out of this universe. It's, it's really like how can I play the economy the best that I can. So as a salvager, essentially, you're going to be going out there looking for things to salvage and then processing all that and then selling what you've processed. So whether you salvage it for parts or salvage it for materials, you'll then be able to sell that on. And it's basically you going out to work every day, putting in your, your work and then reaping the benefits at the end of it. So it's one of those ones where by the end of it, you're kind of working to build yourself a career and lifestyle in the universe. So you've done your day's work, you get back and then you've got your, your money to do whatever you want with basically. Obviously from day one, we've always kind of envisaged that it's gonna have the arms on the side, which basically are the landing gear, which is spring uh, sprung driven. And we then have to essentially make that work in a way that our players expect it to work because it visually looks like that those will bend. And we then have to go, right, well, it's obviously got to bend because that's the expectation we've put out there. So that has kind of provided a unique challenge because typically as a rule, the landing gear is its own separate thing and then the thrusters are their own separate. Whereas the way that this is structured, there's like a hierarchy in place where you've got the, the VTOLs on the end of the flexing arm landing gear. When I first looked at the landing system, I realized it was going to be a lot different than what we had done before. We always drive our landing systems through a spring and the spring compresses and then that drives an animation of the art compressing. Um, what we found early on during prototyping of the compressing landing gear was that we had to remove the collision from the landing gear because that would interfere with the spring. You can imagine the spring compressing and then it, the ship hits the landing gear and then the spring jolts. So that is one um, limitation of our landing system as it is right now. We expect to get collision back on so you can walk against it in the future though. Another limitation is that we can't 
add a thruster onto a landing gear. Um, it's like attaching an item to an item which is attached to the ship. Um, that's also going to be solved in the future through the item 2.0 process, but today the landing sil system is still in uh, its original form. The other issue is that we are unable to detach uh, segments of a landing gear. Once the, once the object's been skinned and it's one welded mesh for optimization reasons, you're unable to detach little bits. So looking at the landing system on the reclaimer, I knew we wanted to blow off these big uh, housings on the sides, but if it was all a landing gear from the arm all the way to the toes, then we wouldn't be able to detach certain elements. So after talking to Mark Abent, we formed a plan where we would start to drive um, pieces of the hull. We'd leave the arms in the hull of the ship and then just make these feet the landing gear, actually. So those wouldn't have any collision, they wouldn't take damage, but then you'd get the UV2 damage and detach events on top. So proceeded to uh, start working on the model. And um, we had to separate a lot of meshes. Every time you separate a mesh to make a piston work, you also have to worry about the LODs. And it became hundreds of meshes to deal with to get all the, the pistons separated out. And I called on uh, Daniel Grubby, who was uh, the ship artist who helped on the exterior of the ship. So he worked with me, um, and it was really great. Uh, we have a great relationship with the UK. Um, I love working with the UK because um, I can go to sleep, send them notes, go to sleep, wake up the next morning and have, have changes made, and then I'll do the same. I'll make changes, and then I'll pass that off. It's like a baton, and so we're working on the ship 24-7. And that worked out really well. We got all the pistons um, rigged. Um, I animated the compression. And then at that point, we started to try and hook it up to our mannequin system and found that we, had, we needed just a little bit of code to drive four independent whole arms onto these feet at the same time. And they had to both be synced per spring. So we got the springs working, and then I worked on the mannequin. Um, the mannequin needed a little upgrade. We got programming support from Mar Max Hung and Mark Abent, and we're, we were able to drive the arms of the hull with the feet in unison and with each spring. And then I took it for a test flight on the planets and failed horribly, and I'm not a very good pilot. but. We got it landing and we can drop it on the, 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 uh, the planet now and all the springs compress and it looks really cool and massive. The benefit uh, of compressed landing gear to the player is that, well, for one, it looks amazing, right? You, you wanna see the gears working, you wanna see the pistons compress, you see the weight of the ship and it gives it a really good feel. But also we found that with stiff landing gear, it created issues landing on planets where you might put a foot in a groove or you land tilted. And what we want to do in the future is really just stabilize that. So now we just have these springs that drive the landing gear and the springs themselves will find grooves in the planet and settle. And it should be pretty solid uh, and stick. So that's, that's mainly the, the benefit. So the, the landing itself, the way that the process works is it, it uses a VTOL system. So the main thrusters pivot 90 degrees and they then provide upward thrust uh, to guide you in for your landing. So because of that, we've had to kind of factor in what thrusters will then cover going forward when they've tilted. So there's been a lot of back and forth about that. But essentially when the player comes into land, much like most of the landing gears we have in our game, there is a bit of spring to them, whereas the reclaimer, you'll generally see a bit more spring to it and it will rest the body much lower to the to the ground and it kind of raises the the arms up so it, it's really unique looking it's you know essentially it's going to look completely different on the ground than in the air and it's a really kind of a nice thing to see right now we've got to a point now where the landing gear works it looks amazing and it's something that i think is going to be really unique to the ship as well we also have a lot of short-term things which you kind of probably didn't account for at the start such as having an elevator inside it which goes to multiple floors but also goes outside so because of that it starts to bring up certain issues that we didn't even know about at the time so because we're finding an issue where 
when the elevator travels outside of the physics grid in the ship, it loses its physics. So once you get outside and you step off the platform, you can then just walk through the, the geometry and we obviously need to solve that problem. So that's currently one that we're working on at the moment. Uh, you've got a drone room, uh, which has got two operators where you can basically send drones out the top of the ship. Uh, they will then go searching uh, kind of essentially to save you having to get into the nooks and crannies of an area in your enormous ship and then you can then bring them back with the data that you need on whether or not it's worth going in there. Um, you've also got tractor beam on there, which is operated by two of your crewmates. Uh, they can essentially tractor beam an object in, such as a, a derelict ship or something like that, pull it closer, and then the claw will then do its job, and you actually have a claw operator um, at the front of the cockpit as well, next to the pilot. So it's really a hands-on ship. There's, there's pretty much a role for every single person on board. Um, it's, it's gonna be one of those Ships where once it's up and running, you know, you've got a real kind of hub of activity going on in there. Yeah, so this ship has a five-man crew, so you need to have your pilot, but then you also need to have two guys controlling the tractor beam turrets. Uh, the tractor beams are what attract the scrap into the ship itself where it gets processed. And then you need someone to actually run the machine that churns up the metal. So it's not really something that you can do on your own, so it would definitely help if you have people around to help you do it. So with the Reclaimer, there's obviously uh, a lot of crew stations that we've got in there for a lot of different purposes. So uh, to kind of talk you through the ones that we have, we've of course at the front got the pilot. Um, he's just a sole pilot in there. And you know, you'll have all the standard kind of things you'd expect as a pilot, all your MFDs and radar and all that kind of stuff. Um, next to him is the claw operator. So uh, once we've got salvage fully online, uh, that guy there will be able to operate the claw itself. So once they've got the uh, salvageable kind of wreck or whatever it is you're, you're salvaging in position, you'll be able to be the guy who operates the claw, which then sends, breaks it all up and sends it into the ship. Behind those guys, you've got tractor beam operators. So they will be the ones who are kind of essentially targeting what it is you're wanting to salvage and pulling it into position for the claw operator at the front. Um, we've also got a couple of drone operators, which are kind of more to the middle of the ship. They're on the top deck and they kind of work independently in their own little space and then we've also got a number of standing consoles so there's going to be a couple of remote turret operators so they're really your guys who are kind of taking care of your defenses and we've got a couple of scanning stations in there as well uh, with kind of mfd functions so you know general engineers and of course we've got an engineering section on the ship so there is a couple of engineering consoles as well so there's really like a mass array of kind of work to be done on the ship uh, to be kind of most effective and it's it's one of those things where people can really own their role as a crew member on the ship. One of the areas of the ship that I worked on personally that I'm really proud of is the actual processing room itself where all the blades are. Because this is such an important part of the ship, we needed to make sure that it felt alive and actually really dangerous because this is where all of the metal gets churned up and turned into the scrap that you sell later on. And I think we managed to achieve a really gritty, dangerous area that's just full of smoke and it doesn't really look like somewhere that you want to get caught. The thing that makes this ship unique is that we're not trying to take it from an out of factory fresh look. It already has a character to it. It feels like a place that is lived in and has its own personality. And we wanted to make sure that that came across to the player when they're in there. It's not just this piece of metal, it's actually its own character. It's, it's very much down and dirty. It's got a industrial look to it because it is essentially a tool for getting salvage and making a profit off it. To achieve the look and feel of this ship with the griminess and the, the, the overall um, dirty industrial aesthetic that we wanted to go for, we had to come up with some new materials, whereas in the past using other Aegis ships, we'd reuse materials for it. The QA are going to come back to us with a lot of usability bugs that we haven't noticed just from generally setting up as a first pass. Um, and also in the meantime, we start to discover if there's any problems anywhere where we've not accounted for something where a new feature has been implemented. So because of the reclaim has got so many new features and new ways that we have to look into setting it up, we then start to find, oh, maybe our system doesn't currently support it and how can we go about doing that? So there's been a lot of back and forth between myself, Art, and then also the code guys as well. It's just really broadening the careers. Um, it's something that I'm kind of most excited in because I'm not really much of a combat guy and um, being able to kind of sell the idea of a universe means that we can then look into the different aspects of that. So, you know, further on down the line, we're going to have different roles and careers. And it's really just about making it so that when you are part of that career, you, you have a defined role and you kind of feel you're most invested in that. 
like I've kind of mentioned before, like we've been so combat focused leading up to this and rightfully so for what the players can do in game. Whereas I think the Reclaimer coming in at this stage really opens up a lot of doors for 3.0 and onwards. Because for me, like when I first joined the team, the thing that sold me on the game most was it building a universe and not just a game. And being able to expand on that for our players so that they can start doing entirely new things in a game that they've been playing in the Alpha 4 for months. It's really exciting to see. I love this ship because it's something that is completely different to what we've been doing before. It doesn't have that brand new, brand, that clean aesthetic. It's actually, it has a lot of character and personality to it that we could tell with some environmental storytelling already. So the Reclaimer is actually going to be the largest ship going into the game for 3.1. Um, it's absolutely gargantuan, it's huge in comparison to everything else. You're looking at around about 150 metres in length. Um, it's fairly similar width wise and then you're looking about 50 to 60 meters in height so it kind of dwarfs a lot of the other ships that we've got in the game. Uh, we've had to increase one of the landing pad sizes in order to fit it in which has again been another fun thing that we've had to kind of overcome and yeah it's the actual kind of scale of it is enormous and when you kind of walk up to your landing pad where you've spawned it in and you're looking up at it it's it's amazing. It's really been challenging but also like one of those really rewarding things that we've we've just started seeing it working in game now and like it is by far the coolest ship you'll ever see land it's it's just looks amazing